Hello everybody, all over the world. Hello, I am HiGPS and welcome to the show. Today we will be looking at the Liberty Launcher post-patch with Windows noises in the background, but no more. It's actually that time of year again here in Norway where it starts to get incredibly cold, so I'm back to my winter setup with like long sleeves. This because it's starting to get actually pretty cold, and the heating on my room isn't on yet. So I, all I get from the heat is from my beard and my clothes and my computer screens. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna be looking at the Liberty Launcher, uh, one of my favorite all-time unlocks. For a soldier, I really like it because it really fits my style and I actually know how to use it, but there's a lot of players who don't, uh, especially after the patch. So let's talk about uh, pre-patch before we're going to talk about it now. What it was like before was that it um, it only had 25% less clip, which means you only had three rockets until you have to reload instead of four, and the rocket was like 40% faster. Now that was fine, for the most part, I thought, but you know nobody knows and understands uh, the game as well as the developers, maybe, maybe close. Uh, but it was good. It was a direct upgrade of the regular rocket launcher, as long as you never fired more than three rockets. If you never fired more than three rockets to kill somebody, you might as well be using the Liberty Launcher, which was what I did all the time. So it was kind of good, so they nerfed it slightly, but it still has the same effect because you now do 25% less damage on four rockets. So that means in order to capitalize on really using this weapon, you have to fire four rockets instead of three. Makes sense, because 25% clip size is three rockets, and if we had 25% damage reduction on every rocket, it's the same as having four with like, having four rockets in the clip with 25% damage reduction is the same damage output as having three in a clip before you have to reload. So it's kind of nerfed, in a way. Which is good. Makes the weapon a bit more... not too strong. Because the way I used it, it was... It was really good. So we're going to look at that today. Uh, the Liberty Launcher and see how that affects our play. A bunch of replays. Like, I had so much fun playing with this weapon. Like, yesterday. I think I have a story. Yesterday! It was probably the most fun I've had in Team Fortress 2. And since I came back from Korea, which is was like in 2012, January. So, basically, it was optimal. Like, both teams had medics. Both teams had, like, a good variety of classes. Everybody was good. Nobody was, like, maybe one or two people who are, like, absolutely clueless. But, hey, it's a pub. It's, like, what it usually is. Some people, like, never really understood. But we had people on our team, so we kind of balanced it out. And everybody was just aware of everything. Like, somebody called out Spy, and everybody was like, Yeah, hey, where's the Spy? Everybody was, like, checking around, Spy checking. And then we catch the Spy. Maybe he'd get, like, one or two kills, and then we kill him. It's not like one Spy killed five people on a cart just because nobody knows how to check their back. And, like, we had a couple of heavies, and they all had sandwich, and we were low, and the medics were dead. They actually threw the sandwich onto other players. And we, like, all helped each other, and we, like, covered the engineer while the center was building and both teams were, like, doing this, and it was just so much fun. It was, like, the best ever, and, like, my faith in Team Forest 2 as a game was just, like, reinvented seeing, like, all these players playing together and getting absolutely destroyed by me and my Liberty Launcher and my buff banner. Oh, yeah! And then I took a break, and then I went on another server, and it totally fucking sucked. It was, like, instant respawn service players were playing like a bunch of fucking idiots being super... Like, you have instant respawn, yet they played extremely passive. I don't... Like, you die and then you respawn. There's, like, no reason not to always be attacking. So, let's uh, look at it. Liberty, uh, Liberty Launcher. Uh, basically, the same elements as before apply. So, if you use the Liberty Launcher before and you kind of use my videos for guidance, uh, there's not going to be all that much new stuff because, basically, it's nearly the same, only that you have to fire one more rocket to reach, like, your, uh, your desired damage output. So... Like I said before, if you never used your fourth rocket, it was pretty much a straight upgrade. Pretty much. Ah, spy decloaking, we heard that. And we have a team here. Some medic, gonna be shooting some rockets. And here's the thing, like, it does 25% less damage. And that's probably off-putting to a lot of people. 
but you have 40% faster rockets, so that means you have to put yourself... Like, it kind of goes without saying, but a lot of players never think about that. They just go like, 25% less damage? Nope, not gonna use that weapon. Gonna use stock instead, because it doesn't have that. But this weapon, it's like, what does... when a weapon has... 40% faster rockets, what does that tell you? Like, as opposed to, like, let's say soldier versus soldier, when do you come out on top if you have less damage but your rockets are faster? I mean, you shoot just as fast, but your rockets are faster. That means, in case you haven't already figured it out, and typing it in the comments, and like, comment, favorite, subscribing. Wait, hang on, hang on. Wait, whoops. There's the HUD. Alright. Just, just hold on for a second. Just hold on. There we go! Forgot to, I turned off my soundboard. Yeah, that was a good joke, yeah. The answer is distance, okay? Uh, as a sniper, everyone, as, as a main sniper, all my playstyles are very much sniper-influenced, where it's me really far in the back and enemies in the front. And... Um, yeah, that just means you can stay further in the back and just kind of do spam damage. Uh, you don't stand as close as normally, but you can stand a bit further back. I mean, you do less damage, but you do less damage faster. You follow? Less that, but faster. It's like the max power way. It's the wrong way, but faster. And what complements that is a buff banner. What does Beth Banner do? Well, you die from fall damage when you're low on health. Basically, fall damage gives you mini crits, and mini crits is 35 or 33% damage, which is more than the 25% debuff, and because you're able to, like, spam and st stuff, you build your Buff Banner faster than you normally would, because your rockets are faster, it's easier to hit targets, like, it's harder for the enemies to dodge your weapons, because the splash damage is still the same. Um, oh, the splash radius, rather. It takes a little bit longer, but it goes faster, kind of. It's like, nearly the same, only that you can stay a bit further back, which means you die less. Uh, it's also important to note, people in the chat saying, like, it ignores damage falloff, so when you're mini crit, if you're close or far away, it does the same amount of damage. So it kind of equalizes out the fact that you're, uh, you do less damage, you actually do a little bit more, and your rocks are faster, so with the buff banner, it's really good, of course, random crits are always, always fair when they happen to you, like when you're getting the crits. The horn, sniper's deaf, laggy sniper is laggy, and we're just uh, doing the basic soldier stuff, staying above the enemy target and shooting down, that goes for every single rocket launcher as a soldier as long as you're above, maybe not the direct hit, the direct hit's more like anti-heavy and sentry things, checking your back for spies, taking your time to reload, consecutive reloads, and overall, this weapon allows you to, you do less damage, but you're a bit safer, and you can have a bit more distance and still be useful. So, um, I thought, you know, this really helps me with the buff banner, and buff banner really helps my team, so I go over from being, like, a dangerous bomber to be more of a lighter support class. I'm like, I s still pack a punch, but I'm not as powerful as I used to be. And it's really hard to juggle these snipers when they play at, like, five frames a second. Let's see if we can get a wider field of view. Yeah, there's me, the invisible rocket launcher. Or the, the invisible soldier. Hard to air shoot, shot th the guy, and then we win. Yay. And then we die. So that's like the whole idea. We're going to be showing uh, a lot of replays for that. I really like this. Um, if you use this weapon as you would use the stock rocket launcher, you wouldn't have as much effect as you normally uh, would. Uh, it's a lot more spammy, and when it's spammy, like, uh, ammo is a bit more important. So, being sure to pick up am fallen ammo, and also using the soldier trick where you, like, shoot an ammo, like, fallen ammo, like, scatter guns, rocket launcher, miniguns, sniper rifles that other players drop when they're dead, and kind of make them fall to you really helps, because if you're just spamming, like, it's easy to spam, and it's easy to run out of rockets, and if you're in our rockets, you're kind of fucking screwed. So, jumping on a sticky bomb launcher at the same time, gonna be shooting stuff. It's easier to shoot players that are retreating with this weapon because the rockets are indeed faster, so weakened enemies are actually easier to kill because your rockets are faster, and the damage difference doesn't really matter a lot much because they're already pretty weak. I mean, if they have one health, uh, that's pretty good. Also, Kritzkrieg, uh, Liberty Launcher, pretty fucking good. Alright, I'm not gonna lie. 
It's still uh, a buttload of damage, which is almost as much as a shitload. Shitload of damage is stock uh, rocket launcher, but a buttload is uh, liberty launcher uh, damage. And also using the whip as well, doing a bit of a buff buffer soldier, helping the team for the most part, capping the points, checking for spies, reloading. That's a bunch of guys. Oh, demo men are good at shooting up. Oh god, okay, um. Calling for medic. And once again, this uh, type of play is very much dependent on you having a medic to heal yourself. That goes for any power class. Like, if you want to do well as either soldier, demo, or heavy, uh, if the enemy team is competent and know what they're doing, it's going to be really hard if you don't have heals, because you, your class is based off that you actually have to take a bit of damage in order to do what you do. So here we go, we got a couple of kills so far, and crits! Yeah, baby! Getting the crits, getting the crits, and fucking sniper. Those fucking snipers. They don't add anything to the game. Especially when I'm on a kill spree with crits and buff bat and mini crits and just killing everything. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can find... The control point is being contested. Find that thing. So, uh, this is actually, I think, the third attempt on this Dust Bowl last push. This push, like, Dust Bowl. Come on, man, it's Dust Bowl. Like, everybody knows. The last point on Dust Bowl is really fair if you're a double man on the red team. Like, if you're on the red team on Dust Bowl, you get a lot of kills, regardless. It, it's how it works. So we get crits, uh, gonna go in and do a, bit, a bunch of damage, and get like a double uh, crit air rocket, kinda, because the medic jumped, and if he didn't jump, the rocket would actually go over his head, because I was aiming at the sniper in the back, because the snipers kinda kept uh, screwing us over. But here we have a battalion's backup! We take reduced damage, and we're gonna attack with the rest of our team, but we're only gonna we're gonna show us so you have a visual. Because what happened earlier was that I tried to do it with the buff banner and we just died. Like we didn't like we killed some of the red guys, but we we also died. So here here's my dude. There's my loadout, my favorite one. Sonic Kapoor. Uh, this is Guy, by the way. So um, like if you take a look at we have two medics and we have a heavy. I'm gonna sniper at the back here, so he's gonna be useful as well. We have a soldier. Gonna be backing us up with another soldier backing up. So a soldier backing up a soldier is pretty good. Here comes the push, we take reduced damage. I'm in the front. It's very important as a soldier that you go in the front and you rocket jump and give the initiative to people to attack. And already we're covering a, a lot of ground, also getting ubered while doing the buff banner. But the heavy wasn't as close as he should be, but hey, we did make the push thanks to that little uh, buff banner there. Allowing us to survive because uh, with the... Uh, I mean the battalion's backup. With the buff, buff banner, the one that gives us extra damage, we just died. But thanks to teamwork and magic and shit, we uh, we kicked some ass. So we're gonna look at more dust. Now we're gonna be on the red team because the red team is the best team, according to Valve. We're gonna be playing on dust ball on defense, running the same loadout. Still, it's probably the one I had the most success with. I th don't think the Liberty Launcher complements using a shotgun for the most part because you do faster rocket damage. So. Um, and stuff like that, so let me just see if I can... Yeah, so we're doing pretty good. We're doing really good. So we have a little buff banner here. Trick for buff banner and any kind of trumpet is just to hold it. And buff banner uh, uber charge is pretty dangerous. As you can see, we're uh, in the top here, top three. Got a demo man as well, doing the damage. And because of the faster rockets, you hit more plate people, you build the charge faster than you would a normal rocket. And it's, uh, I guess, a little bit harder for pyros to air blast because the rockets are faster. So overall, uh, it like it throws the enemy off more than anything. So here comes the enemy push, and like this bowl is like if you are having a, a hard time pushing, you know pushing any point on Dust Bolt, really, it's kind of normal. Especially when you have, you know, a setup like this. Let's see if we can get faster faster speed here. So we have a sentry that is on the high ground, so if you want to kill this sentry, you can either peek out here and get shot by the sentry, or you can go down here and get shot by the sentry, or you can peek out this door and get shot by the sentry. No matter where you go, we'll get shot by the sentry. And when you kill that sentry, you can go on and get shot by this sentry, which is covered by this sentry, uh, and this sentry covers the flank, so... So we're a soldier, okay? 
And we also <laughs> you also have sticky traps covering the sentry. So if the spy zaps it, it he dies. He dies. Pretty effortlessly. Pretty effortlessly he dies. Oop. So just doing some reloading. Just hanging out. Oh, there's people on there. Quick fix. Yeah, that just means I'm gonna build my buff banner on you. Yeah. So um, from all my experimenting, buff banner, any kind of uh, like conjurer, and here we have a buff banner. Oh yeah, oh yeah, buff banner. Oh, it's a sniper. Come here, sniper. I'm gonna kill you. Boosh. And have the Uber clearing things up, killing people left and right. Enemy team doesn't have a face. Oh, you use the Vita saw. Oh crap. You grab the health kit? Don't worry, I'll just kill you uh, again. And rocket jump to safety! And shoot, kill the scout while you're retreating. And survive! Competent medic is competent, which is really good. Alright. Uh, as a soldier, uh, being passive is not really good ever, so the more aggressive you can be and the more you can hold on a, a spot, the more team you can buy your time. Hey, look at that, it was my spray. It's my spray. Post this on Reddit, got a lot of votes. I am heavy weapons bird. This is my weapon. It weighs four kilograms and fires very tiny custom tool cartridges at ten thousand rounds per minute. Oh buff banner from another soldier. This is good timing. So we're gonna time it with this guy. Let me whip you so we run faster. Yeah, double buff banner, here we go. Ownage ponage, boosh boosh, you're dead, then I'm dead. But, um, not to worry, this is what the stats look like when you play Soldier on Dust Bowl. Let's see here. We got uh, a lot of domination. There's only one, two, three guys on the other team that we are not dominating. I think dominating is th you kill them three or four times in a row without them killing you. So being on the red team is fair for people on the red team. Yeah. So that's a double buff banner. We're gonna have a uh, little, another additional look at ownage ponage here. Boop. We're gonna be whipping our friend. We're gonna be speeding things up. So yeah. Uh, we had a, a replay submitted by somebody who's like, yeah, I don't really like this weapon, and they kind of used the set with the market gardener and the reserve shooter. But I don't think the reserve shooter complements uh, the way the Liberty launcher works. So we're just kind of taunting the players here. As you can see, uh, this is where the screenshot was taken. I'm dominating. You can't actually see how many I'm dominating. It's not really that important. Not really that important, but you can see it here. Look at these stats, man. Stats. Uh. 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 All right. So this is something oh, I mean by, uh, by being aggressive as a soldier. As a soldier, you should never be afraid to die. You're kind of like the expendable class. And especially when I was playing, you know, here and having like a really good time, you played for like two hours or something with like really good players and really good everything. Uh, you can, as a soldier, especially with newer players, it's important that you take initiative and you go first. And like you use the voice commands, like like when p some people do something good, you like use a blind, like you chairs or like good work, uh, nice shot, whatever. And whenever you're gonna be attacked, you just go 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 charge attack, and it kind of like lifts the mood and it kind of like boosts the overall experience. So use the voice commands in the game, especially when you need help and everything. It just like adds to the atmosphere and it becomes a lot more fun and uh, I don't think enough players use it. I use it all the time, especially as a soldier, and it just really helps. Oh wait, kind of, let's uh, slow it down to normal speed. So right now we're shooting into the enemy spawn and we're gonna use the strategy of running into the spawn but with a nice twist which is uh, not dying. So we're just gonna go in here and build the buff banner uh, as much as we can. People dying left and right, gonna take the time to reload. And here is the enemy spawn. Gonna be shooting some more rockets. Gotta need that buff banner. You can't actually see how much I have, but it's almost full at this point. Yeah, there we go. Blowing the trumpet. Oh, here comes the soldier. Surprise, motherfucker! Buff banner, crit damage, boosh, boosh. And I'm actually low on health. Medic is dead. Uh, but we are not gonna retreat like a coward. We're actually gonna stay and hold our ground. And thanks to milk, we regain health when explosions are happening, but we take a lot of damage. So we're kind of just hanging back. And then we 
immediately go back, like we just don't go and hide, you know, because when we hide we won't actually see what the enemy is doing. So right now, this is this goes for just, not Liberty Launcher in general, but any class in general when you're defending, is that right now, like, what presence do my team have? It's currently me, who's like just a rocket launcher, and then it's like, the blue team is attacking, and the blue team is attacking, and there's, like, every other red dude is fucking dead. So right now, the first thing the enemy is going to meet is me. And I want to stall them as much as possible, because actually a lot of my team is dead. A lot of the blue players are alive, and they are running the... <laughs> the holy what the fuck uh, strategy of one medic, four demo, four heavies, and two soldiers, and uh, an engineer for... for good luck. And I'm, I'm the first thing they'll meet. And we have a sentry only level two here, we have a medic, and we're going to try and stall for time here. Which is not going to be easy. But we did take out the Medic, which decides that, you know, when you have a lot of power classes, that Quick Fix is the way to go. Uh, use the Medic Gun on attack, pretty much always, because of sentries. And right now, the enemy team could just at any point in time have attacked, but because I was there, I kind of stalled them a little bit. And we blow the horn once again, and we're going to have some... I'm going to spray our bird, and then we're going to attack and give... Let's see, going to give everybody... A little rewind so we can actually see uh, how many gets the buff banner. And now everybody has 35% uh, extra damage. These guys are curling up in a ball here. Ooh, how's this gonna go? Here we come. Here comes the Onage Ponage team and um, pretty much uh, cleared the entire table. If everybody attacked, we would, but some people might be low on ammo and low on things. But uh, we cleared it up pretty good. Cleared it out pretty good. Liberty Launcher. Really good for death balling against other death balls that don't have the Liberty Launcher. The, the buff banner. Buff banner, battalion's backup. Also really good when used at the same time. And if you have uh, one of each uh, backpack, uh, they all stack. So you will have it'll take less damage, do more damage, and heal when you shoot. So it's pretty good. But it does take some building damage to get up here. But uh, thanks to the layout of the map Dust Bowl, which means Valve really hates the Team Blue and just wants them to take a pounding and get hit a lot. And let me just say, this medic looks fucking badass. I mean, look at this guy. He has a robot bird. You don't want to... Don't... Don't want to mess with him. And quick fix, of course, if they were invulnerable. And somebody's using a horn. And we're gonna counter blow. Uh, after we uh, get some more health at the dispenser, because if we attack at very low health, we're gonna die, because the enemy team has a lot of attacking classes. So doing more rockets. Hey, they're clustered together, doing a lot of damage with our demo man friend here, clearing it up, because this map is fair. So fair. I think you get the point by now. So, uh, Liberty Launcher. Uh... From my experiment, it gives the best results when your role is more support and staying alive at further back than just bringing the raw muscle, which uh, the stock rocket launcher does and kind of uh, black box in a way. And then we uber into the enemy spawn and we do a lot of damage and then we're gonna... I'm like, yeah, let's retreat. Actually, let's not. Let's blow the horn while we take some damage and we're gonna attack! Yeah, take this, take this. And oh shit. And we're dead. But, um... Got a lot of kills. Got a lot of kills. So we're gonna be moving on to the next. The control point is being so there we go. We are... Whoop. We are now on, um... Granary. And we're hurting ourselves to help build the Uber for the Medic. That is important as a soldier as well, to hurt yourself when the time is right. Usually you can build Uber pretty well if your team just attacks, takes some damage, and falls back before they're dead. Then you can also build Uber in the same way and also attack at the same time. Very much uh, recommended here, getting some kills uh, here and there, and I think we're gonna have to do the little trick in order to see ourselves. Because I do like to have the indication of my blonde soldier instead of just a floating rocket launcher. That is very much recommended indeed. The medic needs some help, apparently, and oh, there's a bunch of guys there. We have a pyro, so he's going to be able to uh, reflect. I did some nice work there. Uh, scout. Uh, starting to run a bit low on ammo, I think. Did not uh, pick up the fallen ammo there. Uh, this is something just I do. I'm not sure if other people do it. When I'm low on ammo, I just spam need a dispenser here. That's kind of like saying I need ammo. 
So we have a medic here with the bullet resist, and we have a heavy kind of... We're not really doing that much. And that was my last rocket, and I'm like, damn it! Alright, so I'm going to go and grab the ammo that the engineer needs. So I guess the engineer needs the metal more than I need ammo, so we're just going to hang out here until the, the Spencer's online. Okay, the Spencer's online, we get the ammo. And we're going to be seeing how to handle a sentry with the Liberty Launcher. Okay, buff banner, we've seen this before. Liberty Launcher buff banner, that was an episode on its own. It's kind of like a revisit to that after the, buff, after the nerf. Uh, it's still pretty good. Uh, remove the sticky bombs in the sentry! It's a sentry! Oh, and an Ubered engineer. Wait. Uh. What's that? Hmm. Never seen that before. Okay. So we're like, oh god, sentry! And we hide behind here, and we just hide. Just doing a little ring around the rosy. Just. And a poke, and oh no, a medic! Ah! And he kills us. And you see who it is? You saw who it was? It was this badass motherfucker right here? He hit me with a fucking statue. But then he did die. Do no harm. Liar! But yeah, that's a, just like positional thing you could do, and showing you also for a medic, like you can just attack a soldier, especially with the um, um what is it? a solemn vow, where you can actually see the enemy's health uh, if you don't have that good game sense just yet. So we're gonna be playing on Gold Rush, which is like a payload version of uh, Dust Bowl. So we're just gonna wait for the gates to open. And as a soldier in general, it's important that you lead the attack. Especially on pub servers where not everybody might as well, everybody is not as comfortable to like play. Maybe they're a bit passive and they're like, no, if I attack, I'm gonna die. And then it ruins my stats. So we're using the whip and whip rock jump. We're gonna go here and just like basically hug the enemy and be like, yeah, I don't give a, I don't give a damn. I'll hit you with the wrench and you headshot my demo friend. Die, boosh. Yeah, you're dead. And I'm kind of just in the middle of everything and it's like, die. Yeah, whipping them. For some reason, killing people with the whip is just so satisfying, because you get like that whoosh. And there was a spy! Checking the back, saving the medic. Well, the medic is dead, but we had our heavies, which are like lawn mowers. So as soon as they stay on the cart, they will maw down everything that's called a defense from the enemy. Try to escape, not with my random crits, you don't. It's always good to count on your random crits. Tell me if you, you haven't done that, like... You're really low on health, and you see some somebody, and you have like a rocket left, and you're like, PLEASE TO GOD! be a random crit. And then it is, and then you kill them, and you're like, ha! Scrub. Get Rick noob. And hey, buff banner, we survived so long. And I was really aggressive this entire round, I just ran out and just attacked head on. And now I have another friend who is, has the original, which is like the stock rocket launcher, only slightly less splash damage for some reason. I meant to have read on the Wikipedia, I haven't tested that. Might be true, if it says so on the wiki. Doing the damage with the soldier, and we're kind of just holding the forward ground. While our team pushes the cart, it's me and my soldier friend, who is probably dead, but no, a sentry! Taking out the sentry, and if there's a sentry up there, there might as well be a teleporter, because how the fuck did I get up there without using some Wrangler jump shenanigans teleporter action? So they might be setting up a base behind us, and my team kind of has this death ball going, and I've been leading the attack so far, and I think these heavies are more than capable with their medic to just push the cart to victory, so I'm gonna go up here and take out whatever's here. And also joined by a pyro and a medic as well. There's another engineer who's like, well, I'm going to build a level 1 sentry that doesn't actually cover anything. Uh, and the counter to sentries is the whip. Whoosh. There you go. Taken out with the whip. And uh, we have a medic here with... Oh! Soldier taking him out. Oh no, stay away from our medic. Taking him out. Quick fix. Very nice. Oh no, it's... Po oh! Um... Okay, a pyro, shit. Okay, I'm real on hell. Oh, he knows how to. Okay, blow the horn. And we're dead. I think I had like, like 15 health or something at the end there. So I was like, well, might as well two out in style. So that is going to be all of my replays so far. So now we're going to go over to the user submitted replays, which was quite a few.
So we're going to look at how others use it. So this is um, Grunt Kylie, I think, is it? Blue. Yeah, it's Grunt Kylie. This is going to be hanging on spawn for a little bit. And then he's going to be attacking. Yeah, da, 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 da. okay, doing the rock jump. Going to be playing here on Mountain Lab, which is a map that really could have used some revision because it's not that great um, in terms of that every class has something to do with it. And uh, yeah, doing fairly good. And there's like some. I the another vote is on three seconds away. It's like yeah, attack, attack, shit. Oh, killed. You know what? This weapon sucks. I'm gonna use the stat rocket launcher. You could always hear that. Like he didn't say that, but someone else said it did. Like this weapon sucks. And it's like, well, did you use it right? The stock launcher? And they're like, yeah, of course I did. So here we have him again, uh, added the skewed camera for a horror effect. And he's going to demonstrate once again that as a soldier, even with the Liberty Launcher, you can stay in the action and take a pounding and still stay alive and be a distraction for your spy to do stuff, and, as well as other things. There's a demo knight up there. Bullet re uh, bullet explosive resist is not going to help you. And I'm just going to jump over here, utilizing rocket jump. Zoning them out, very important. Getting that prediction skill is something that uh, helps, so he's like shooting at the health pack and stuff, actually... Actually running on top of a spy there. And just staying in the combat, killing a bunch of people, there's a scout there, kills him as well. There's another soldier with a Liberty Launcher, but Liberty Launcher is good against Liberty Launcher, so if you have a Liberty Launcher against a Liberty Launcher, you kind of have no chance, because it's good against itself. Or some shit. So here we have a guy on Nucleus that kind of... This is the guy that said he didn't he didn't like it, and this was uh, a Rocky from Dot Play. Has a pony in his avatar. That adds... I'm not sure what that adds. Maybe nothing. So he's going to be playing here on Nucleus. Uh, I usually see him here from time to time whenever I play a Nucleus, because apparently like one map servers are cool. And he's kind of using this in a strange way. He's like using the uh, reserve shooter a lot, so he's kind of treating this the same way as you would stock rocket launcher and stock shotgun. Uh, and then he's going to market garden this bitch. There you go. Take that, you pyro maniac. And I don't think he really utilizes the fact that you can zone out pretty well with this weapon because of the faster rocket speed. He kind of does the same thing he does with the uh, st stock stuff, but not as good. And also, sent mini sentry is a bit more of a bitch to deal with. Uh, it take three rockets or something to kill, something like that, uh, which is fine because, because uh, you know. When uh, when people um, like this is always like a discussion uh, with the mini sentries. People go like, mini sentries are OP, and it's like, like they're so OP they should be removed from the game. They're like, ah, mini sentries fucking suck, and it's like, really, a hundred HP a mobile target is more than you can handle. It has it does less damage than the level one sentry, and it has less health than a level one sentry, and it can't fucking move. So that. Is that too hard for you? Can't imagine how it is with scouts who are, has more than 100 health and are really fucking fast. Can't imagine how you'll deal with those. Oh, those are fine. We have those in sixes. So he's kind of just hanging out. So a Liberty Launcher, kind of very good at anti-personnel. Killing stuff like that. That's a Demo Knight who is absolutely awful at what he does. You know, if I if I suck at killing people with bombs, I might as well suck at people with, killing, uh, with a pan. So he's kind of just hanging out here and not really being all that aggressive or, or not really doing. He's just kind of just hanging out here. And of course, this is a King of the Hill map, and like if your team holds the point, your enemy the enemy team sucks. There's like really not a lot to do. So let's just uh, speed it up, because this thing is kind of long, so we're just going to see what it does. Hangs out here, shoots a rocket reload, hangs out here. See some people through the window, doesn't do anything about it. Runs in, shoots a couple of rockets. 
There's another soldier there, doesn't engage, gonna wait for the health pack, kills the useless Demo Knight once again. Hangs out, kills the soldier, hangs out, just walks around in a circle, grabs the health kit again, goes up top here, gonna be shooting down, doesn't really commit, doesn't utilize the strategy of running into the enemy spawn and dying at any point in time, which is a good strategy if your team is winning and there's absolutely nothing to do. You can utilize that strategy, that's why it's so popular. Especially among teams that are heavily stacked on pub servers. So they're kind of just hanging out so here still, hasn't really left. Tries to get another market kill. Garden kill, jumps around, doesn't really utilize the... Either of his weapons capabilities, such as the market garden. He's used it once, or he has tried twice. Sniper of the year. Gets taken out by a taunting scout who just had a laughing fit of his life. And the... Um, Kind of just hanging out, shooting, we're jumping around, doesn't really do all that much. Stay on the high ground, shooting down, using basic soldier things, nothing happens, runs around. Switches weapons, shoots the pyro, kills the pyro. We'll probably grab the health kit. No, actually gonna run into spawn and grab the health kit, actually. So that is something new, that just did new meta instead of staying there and... Um and do that, shoot shoot on the point, do less damage, don't go towards the point or anything, and you know, now he goes towards the point after taking him out, kills the scout, jumps out, shows his shoulder in the face with the shotgun, goes back, grabbing um, more health and ammo from the resupply locker, is gonna go up and visit his favorite spot in the entire map, which is this health pack area right here, which seems to be kinda crowded. Kinda need to put up a dispenser, maybe water dispenser, so people can hang out and just drink and just chill, because this is the place to be, it has computers, it has a window, it has a nice view. The enemy spawn is right below, you could at any point in time just go and attack it, but there's mini sentries down there, and of course we don't mean centuries are really fucking broken as shit, so just still gonna hang around. I'm not gonna be committing all that much because the enemy team seems utterly incapable of just running on the point and killing other shit or switching to a class that actually does any damage. So they're still hanging out here in this room, which is really great. Okay, we're on the, on the top front here, but nope, that was kind of scary. Gonna go back in the room and clear out the soldier who actually killed us, and the replay is over! Thank you very much. When you use like an unlock like this, try to at least use it in the way that you will benefit you. Because uh, right there, he used it the exactly same way. I think if he used a stock rocket launcher, he would actually been better off. Because sometimes, uh, if let's say both of you, the, the enemy, like if you meet the black box soldier, he's gonna heal, and you already do less damage. So, if you don't kill the black box soldier on the second rocket, you're pretty f much fucking dead with the Liberty Launcher because you will have to fire a fourth rocket in order to do as much damage as the black box does on three. You know? Because the black box only has... The black box is essentially what the Liberty Launcher was before. It's just three rockets, no damage penalty, you heal yourself for every like, target that's in the explosion radius. And if you encounter somebody with that and you don't kill them on the second rocket, it's a big chance they're gonna kill you on the third, regardless, because the, but the firing speed on the rocket is the same. It's just a travel distance. So if you're really close to a buff banner soldier, which he was at there at the end, you're just gonna fucking die, like every time. Uh, so let's see, that was number, oh, that was 11. Move on to number 12. So we're going to end up here. We're going into Gozizan territory, and we're going to see some nice, some little flanky uh, play here with usage of the Liberty Launcher and Buff Banner, which was kind of like the subtopic of this week of this episode because, like, uh, like I said before, I feel the Liberty Launcher works best with the backpack because uh, of the spammy nature of the weapon because you can zone out and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go and fucking wreck this guy and uh, do some more damage, actually not dying. Grabbing health and uh, holding that. And what's that? Heavy! Heavy! His best friend for life! All right, heavy! Okay, all right, heavy man, let's go. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum, 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 that heavy it looks like a motherfucking badass. Let's look at his loadout. He has the Borch Belt, a robot arm, and a hat that sits slightly tilted on his head. Badass indeed, and they're gonna go together. He uh, has his. Uh, keep in mind, as a soldier, you run faster than a heavy, so that's no problem. Sniper, no match for a minigun of ownage ponageness. Gonna, he's gonna be grabbing the health kit, and you have the buff hammer, and uh, engage. Uh, mini sentries. Nothing two people with uh, extra damage can handle, except that buildings don't take crit damage at all. And kind of just hanging about here, uh, back here, and did some nice little work with the heavy there. Teaming it up. Teamwork. Teamwork. Is good. Didn't really do all that much with the buff banner because there was really nothing there, but you don't know, like... Uh, that goes for zoning out the enemy when you see what they're doing. Like, you see, like, an enemy choke, right? There's, like, a choke point, and there used to be a lot of blue guys there. 
but how do you know that there's blue guys there? The answer is either there comes bullets and shit out, out around the corner, or you just have to look. Because sometimes there's no one there, and that goes for the game sense. So if you look around a corner and there's like no one there, it's like, all right, we can move forward. And that's what I mean. Like, uh, I haven't done this right now, but let's see. Uh, is there anyone occupying this area right now? Well, there's a pyro, but he's not here. So this entire area, which used to be a giant choke, is just occupied by this level one mini sentry. And there's a teleporter up there, and there's like one soldier. Uh, but there's really no choke at this point in time. Uh, usually some players like to put up a level 3 sentry, that is very good as an engineer, but uh, having low health and uh, shooting a spy is not the best idea because you fucking die. And uh, that's something you can also take into consideration when you're fighting a Liberty Launcher soldier. The closer you are, the worse it is for him. Because he wants you to have like some distance. It's like, uh, uh, if, if the stock rocket launcher is like a hug, the Liberty Launcher is like the hover hand of hugs. So, it's kind of like what you have to look for. So this is, uh, goes is on once again, just uh, hanging out here on defense. This weapon works uh, just as well on defense as it does on offense. Maybe not as well on offense, depending on the situations, because sometimes you just need to bring that extra muscle you to actually get those kills. Maybe go dart hit and take out a sentry, or if the enemy teams are running a lot of heavies, so uh, that is also a viable choice. And, uh, yeah, jumping up, getting the kills. Because as, um, it makes it easier to spam, like I said before, and the more you spam, the more buff banner you build, and if you build a buff banner, you can absolutely tear, uh, the enemy, uh, new behind hole. So they can poop from two places at once. Uh, with that ownage ponage thing. I don't think they team, no, his team doesn't have a medic, and that really limits his, uh, ownage ponage. So, uh... I feel like if his team would have had that, it would have been doing a lot better. As you can see, it slows down the soldier mechanic and like how dynamic you are as a soldier and what you can do. It slows it down by a lot. Because either it's like, yeah, you have low health and then you die, or you have low health and you run back to spawn and it takes a bit longer. But so far, they're holding. Everybody is dead. Looks like. Well, blue team is attacking. There's a sniper there, taking him out. And there's a demo knight as well, trying to distract him so I'll allow the spike to stab him. It doesn't really happen a lot much gonna go up this area here and see if we can get a flank. Nope, not gonna go up there and see if we can get a flank going. It's more important that we... Nope, not gonna run out to spawn and get health. Gonna call for the medic we don't have, because I do that too. I just think if I spam the medic button, someone on my team will get really annoyed and go medic. So everybody should just call medic all the time. And there's one guy on the team who's like, can't stand everybody fucking calling medic. So I'm gonna go medic and heal everybody. Of course that never happens, but that's like in theory. Oh no, mini sentry! Taken out! Easy operation. Doing the owner's pwnage and dying. Because you don't have heals. If you meet a buff banner soldier and he's kicking the shit out of you and he doesn't have heal, just at any point in time, just kill him. So the next one is, uh, it's, it's actually a question. It's called, how do I push this? I usually hang out a lot on the uh, new Team Fortress 2, uh, a new TF2 subreddit. People have questions. Uh, usually, sometimes there's people with relevant questions. Other times, like, what item is the best value for me? How do I get into trading? Uh, and non-related gameplays, like logistics. Stuff like that. But every time... Uh, a good question shows up, like, how do I X? where X is something. It's not like, how do I get good? Because that's like asking, how do you get good at bicycling? Like, if you do the bicycle, how do you how do you get good at that? And it's like, well, you you sit on it, and then you balance on it. Well, like, it, well, how do you get good balance? It's like, you, you, you practice balance. It's like, how do you practice balance? It's like, I, like, I can't show you how to practice, you can't have to do it on your own. Because I can't teach you that, like, oh yeah, you should just tilt your body at, like, a 45 degree angle if you feel, like, a, a gust of wind, and then balance the way that way, because otherwise you fall off, but if the gust is in the other way, you have to balance it the other way. You know, kind of counteract the, the forces of the nature and, uh, and, and the guns. Uh, but sometimes there's a good questions like, how do I push this? It's really good. So first, goes on, goes... Uh, well, uh, let's, uh, let's recap and see what it does after he comes to the frontier, because this is... 
not necessarily super Liberty Launcher related, but it's like TF2 related in general. So let's pay attention to what he does. Let's assume that this is the first time he goes here and he knows nothing of what just happened. Like this is the, like his first life, even though it isn't, he has like 20, 27 points. So uh, they might have been attacking this for a while, but we don't know. So let's assume, okay, first time we go in. So the first time you do is you try the big opening. So what you do, you just go the main way and you just go in and you take a look just to see what's there. So right now Gozan has seen a pyro. And that's he hasn't seen anything else. Given he might have gone in there before, he might know what's up. So he, he like he didn't even like he he saw this. He saw he saw that guy. But if you gone here, he would have seen oh sentry medic gentleman and shit like that. All right, cool. Uh, going in this way might have not been optimal. So in this case, nice choice of goes on to go here. So he's on the top here. Uh, currently a bit contested. His team doesn't hold it. Probably take some damage. Gonna try and retake it with his team. Uh, goes down and sees a sentry being built by the engineers. Uh, there's actually two sentries. Should probably fire on the one closer to you because that will do more damage, I think. And then he retreats, taking some damage. We actually don't see how much health he has, but uh, let's assume that it was very little. So he helps trigger the dead ringer for a spy, and then uh, he's gonna go and grab some health. And now there's been some downtime, and of course his team has no medic whatsoever, and it's very pyro soldier heavy. And there's a devil man holding there, so he, once again he hasn't peeked in the main door, and he's just gonna go... Well, he's gonna go and peek, alright, so he's gonna go and check, this is good. So he's gonna see what's around the corner, and he sees, like, uh, oh, there's a zap going on. Tried to hit some rockets onto the sentry, barely misses. And uh, taking some damage, and he's gonna retreat and heal back up. Because if you had a medic, things would've gone a lot sooner, you didn't have to fall back to get the health, because as a soldier you kinda need that health to take the damage and not just instantly die. Of course, you can attack at low health, but you're so slow and you can't rocket jump, so you can't really do what soldiers are good at, which is taking a lot of damage and rocket jumping. So, he's gonna try and peek in once again, just to see what's up. Uh, there's still a bunch of dudes there. Okay, so, what we tried now, we looked in... we have looked, uh, in the main, and we've looked up here, and neither of them really work. So, in this situation, what I would have done is like, well, we haven't tried this area yet. We haven't tried this. And we go over here. And we see that there is uh, some soldier present. There's actually a pyro here. Pyro might come out on top. He did. A nice reflect kill there. Actually didn't know. So, but it goes on. He decides to go up here once again just to see what's up. Still being contested by a scout and a demo man. Can't really do all that much. It has to retreat. And then it's going to peek inside the main again. And maybe push the cart a little to stop it from going backwards. It's still a bunch of red dudes in there. And uh, there's rockets coming down here. So now you know there's a soldier up here as well. And we're gonna be trying and taking over this area once again. Getting some presence here. I have a beggar's bazooka soldier. And then he dies. And he asked, like, how do you push this? Well, given the time that you didn't go up here and die, and you actually went over here, you can see that there's actually quite the abundance of blue presence here. And if you came from this side, uh, this spy actually would have zapped the sentry, allowing you to kill that. And you have the high ground advantage. And when you have the high ground here, you can spam this area, that thus allowing your team to get this high ground here. And when you have this high ground, and when you have this high ground, you can kind of just out damage everything that's here and just kill all the shit. Because you can actually hit the engineer behind the sentry, and the dispenser isn't close enough to actually heal the engineer if you're repairing the sentry. And the things just die and you win. So that's how you push that. That's a good question. I want more of that. So we're gonna move on to uh, the next ones. Which is gonna be uh, Ownage Ponage on the defense. And uh, notice the difference in play when we actually have a medic with Kritzkrieg. Kritzkrieg, uh, Liberty Launcher, pretty fucking good. Pretty, pretty good. Doing the damage. First, first, just doing some spam damage to build up that uh, buff banner. Of course, getting crits also helps immensely to build up really quickly because it's the amount of damage you do, not the amount of hits that builds up the uh, buff banner there. So now using the buff banner while the Kritzkrieg is down, just doing a bunch of damage. The enemy team is uh, taking quite a pounding. Can't really go out there as doing a lot of spam. Would really like to see some more rock jumping to get like the aerial view. But uh, gonna be helping taking out this heavy that at any point in time then never ever checks his back ever and decides to punch guys with the rocket launcher because that's how badass he is. There's a robot scout taking him out, doing the spamming, zoning them out. Notice that goes on doesn't really get that close, uh, especially against tougher classes. And hey, another buff banner with the soldiers gonna be spamming the enemy spawn here and gonna be utilizing the tweak of the strat, which is to not die. And the enemy team has taking 
quite a few hits. So how do you stop this? Well, uh, you don't go Raspi's Heavy for starters, and you... Um, well, the enemy team has three medics now, because they realize, you know, if we all heal Gozes on at the same time, he will be three times as good. Another buff banner coming out, and doing more damage and more splash damage. So he's kind of just... His timings work really well when the enemy team is like, Alright, let's regroup and run as a group out. And he's like, oh, you're grouped together? Here, let my splash damage of pure awesome wreckage uh, kill your ass. So, uh, just doing the uh, owner's opponent here. The enemy team isn't really that good. It's kind of a roll. Uh... Not that much resistance, and then they leave. When um, the tough gets, when the going gets rough, the tough gives up. Let's go, Cam. Let's go. Take it easy. Come. Good luck. Get ready. I forgot which one it was. It was one of those. I went to the one of the one where Terry said, What? So with that, we're going to go on and to our second last replay, and we're going to look at... Chaining buff banners! Which is good. It's good. Let's look at the team composition here. Team's composition, pretty good. Other team, kind of support heavy. They are 10, though. So we're going to go Zon here, moving forward with the soldier who is running the regular rocket launcher. And because of the buff, uh, the liberty launcher range, this is very good, just spamming uh, the damage, building that uh, buff banner. So when you do use the buff banner, counter cancels out and you do a bit more damage. You can further enhance the range because you don't do less damage. Oh, uh, buff banner! Okay, attack! Attack! Oh no, an uber! Crap! Uh, fall back! Good thing the heavy uses the absolutely crappy Tommy Slot, which has the one of the lowest damage outputs of all time. And it's gonna be taking out this medic first. And then eventually well it's gonna be reloading, and then he's gonna get the high ground and shoot Oh, it's a spy! Get the spy. Predictable! Get him with the whip. Getting him with that whip. Oh, just, yeah, just shoots shit, hangs out, and... Attack! With another soldier. Keep in mind, having a uh, buff banner on buff banner builds twice as fast, and you can chain them. So now he has used the buff banner, and now it's probably the other soldier's got... Yeah, he's going to be using the buff banner right now. You have medics for heals, you have pyros who don't know how to rock a uh, compression blast, which is good. There's a sentry being zapped. Absolutely awesome timing here from their spy. No more sentries gonna stop them, and the Gozon probably has a buff banner as well pretty soon. As long as you can just do the splash damage on the heavy. Usually what you should do is reload uh, all your weapons and then use the buff banner, because going buff banner and having to reload is kind of not optimal. Really it limits the amount of uh, damage you can put out, so... Still haven't built that buff banner somehow. Maybe he's not been that lucky with his rockets, but he, are sh he is shooting their feet, which is good grabbing the ammo. And okay, here we go. Buff banner with a heavy and pushing the cart maybe. Taking out a spy. Shooting another soldier who jumps and plays the game at 15 frames per second. Probably running defrag at the same time. So snipers fucking kill him. Reload first, boosh. And reload again. Shooting one rocket, reload. And victory, yay. Last replay. For now. I forgot which why I was going to end on this one, but uh, screw it. So it goes on, he's gonna end this off here on upward on defense. Oh yeah, it's like nobody wins. Yeah, that's true, alright, so. Having the crits, but crits versus Uber doesn't really work that way. Triggers the dead ringer on a spy. Whip versus Market Gardener. Who wins? Well, goes his on evaporates. That guy died. Nobody wins.
Yay. So that was the episode for now. Thank you guys for watching so much. At the end, I have some announcements that I forgot to say in the beginning, and that is that I have a Steam group you can join where we discuss topics. As for the next topic, um, I thought about this, and I think we're going to do a completely open one. Usually I impose some sort of restrictions on you guys, like, yeah, you have to use the Liberty Launcher and whatever, or you have to use this set of items, you have to use this set of items, you have to do this and you have to do that. So with this one, it's like, you kind of give your own, you give yourself some restrictions, whatever that might be. It's like, I'm going to play heavy and only use the shotgun. I'm going to go engineer and I'm never going to build or repair anything like the troll engineer we've seen. I was like, I'm going to go medic and I'm going to Uber as soon as I get Uber all at the time or something like that. Like, I'm going to be using this loadout or something. So it's a completely open topic where you could submit whatever you like. Pretty much, it just has to be interesting in some way. Or stupid. Or fail, or awesome ownage ponage. Maybe like super teamwork. Maybe like a team consisting of just gunslinger engineers or something like that. Because uh, next weekend there's not going to be a show because I will be busy. I have some post producing stuff. I will be working on my. Uh, I like to think my best video ever. In terms of learning Team Fortress 2, it's like going to be the best introduction video that anybody's ever made. Other than that, I have uh, a, an idea for uh, something I want to do. I actually, I actually applied to Valve uh, a while ago. I think a couple of days ago. I don't think I don't think it's going to be anywhere because I think they get like online job applications like every fucking day. Uh, I don't think they necessarily know who I am, but uh, I was hoping that... I'm not sure if this exists, I'm not sure, I haven't seen anything, but like... Uh, I'm going to be starting to do some videos where that's going to be called Community Balance Advisor, where I was hoping to get like, not necessarily paid work, it's just like for, for the community where we have uh, p people like me who have a foot in the community, both public and competitive, and kind of help to tweak and balance the game and have more frequent updates with the game. So I'm hoping I could be like some sort of balance advisor because I spend so much fucking time on like all the unlocks and like watching how they work. That's why we do the replay so we see how they work and also how other players play with them as well. Like experience them in pubs where like they aren't the band all the time because sixes players usually tend to just play sixes and pubs not that much and if they meet like a new weapon they don't know what it is. They just assume it's OP. And it's kind of like to get like the middle ground where everybody thinks everything is okay, uh, because Team Fortress 2 is a game that is like always changing and changing so much, but the game isn't keeping up with itself in terms of updates. Because if you look at StarCraft and other games, they update a bit more frequently and they actually change the game a lot. Like I think uh, also some stock uh, stats needs to be uh, altered as well because of unlocks and other things. The game is just constantly progressing and there's like mechanics in the game that needs to be fixed. So I'm hoping that to have some sort of filter with Valve. Not necessarily just maps, but just me, for my sake, just pure unlocks because that's like my thing that I do 159 episodes of, you know? Uh, just talking about that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm hoping that could be a thing. So I'm going to be starting... Um, I think it's going to be like a vlog format where I just take various unlocks and sets and stuff like that and talk about the... Uh, um, the, the way up, uh, unlocks work and how to potentially fix them because that's a problem I think uh, with Valve right now is that they don't have a good filter of filtering what is good feedback and what isn't good feedback because I think they get a lot of angry angry feedback. I know at least the Call of Duty people do like uh, with like one of the Call of Duty devs was like they announced they were going to change like the reload time on a sniper rifle and they got like 20,000 Twitter messages telling them to go f literally go kill themselves and that is not good if you're looking for feedback so kind of just be like a place or like a resource that Valve could probably or the Team Fortress 2 team which is like seven or eight people and the Team Fortress 2 team has a lot on their plate they have to do Linux they have to do Mac uh, they have to look at all the items to add new stuff and they don't really I don't think they have anyone that does what I do in the same degree on their team from what I gather because there's not enough updates so I'm hoping that could be a thing so that's going to be a new video series I'll be doing I'll figure out the format and stuff later it's going to be community <laughs> community balance advising or advisor 
uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and I will uh, see you sometime in the future, perhaps.